Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. You know, the Volkswagen Beetle in its current generation comes in a lot of different packages. You got the coupe and convertible, you got the base model and the high performance turbo. It also comes in a TDI clean diesel, which we've got here today. It's a high mile per gallon option that Volkswagen says is every bit as fun to drive as the gasoline engine models. You know, before we get too far into this, I do have a little bit of a disclosure to make, and that is, well, I'm a little bit of a Volkswagen guy. I have a little more than a passing affinity for these vehicles. I've owned several new Beetles, uh, a TDI, and I currently have a new Beetle right now. I've had other Volkswagens as well, so I do have a little bit more of a, uh, a familiarity with these products than I might some of the other ones I test. Now, does that mean I'm not gonna find anything wrong here or that I don't have anything that I'm gonna complain about? No, but just keep it in mind as you watch. Starting at $24,995, the Beetle TDI comes in a pretty well-equipped trim level at the outset. There's plenty of chrome trim down low on the rockers, across the front fascia grill and lower window belt line. Looking the TDI over, there are a few details that differentiate it from the other Beetles. Notably, the TDI comes with exclusive 17-inch rotor design 10-spoke alloy wheels. Out on the rear hatch is a subtle TDI badge, the only one on the car. The TDI even gets a dual exhaust pipe outlet at the rear bumper, something that was never really emphasized in years past. The current Beetle is definitely more businesslike in its presentation than the last generation new Beetle overall. Our Beetle TDI was a fully outfitted sunroof sound and navigation model priced at $28,315 including destination. The full power sunroof appears much like the panoramic ones that are all the rage. It only opens halfway however and the sunshade is made of a mesh which is not entirely opaque. Front seats are heated and manually adjusted in multiple ways. Seating surfaces even on the full tilt model are leatherette only. Still nice though, they have a carbon fiber look in the side trims and are exceptionally comfortable both front and rear. While the roof line appears lower, there's plenty of leg and headroom for the driver. I'm 5'10 and had to keep the seat a little more forward than in some cars and no clearance issues whatsoever for my hat. Back seat passengers will enjoy more headroom than in the last generation Beetle as well. The dash offers up a playful design with body color panels and a simple layout for switch gear. While it's a bit retro, it still has German bred ergonomics. There's a lot of storage too, with two glove boxes, one upper and one lower. Steering wheel mounted controls for the audio and trip computer functions follow the Volkswagen standard, working very well. The center sack is laid out simply with all pertinent switch gear right where you expect it. The start button in recent Volkswagen fashion is on the console. Equipped in our Beetle is the touchscreen Fender audio system with navigation. Missing from the system is the now almost expected backup camera. HVAC controls remain of the simple to use variety with knobs for temperature, fan speed and vent locations. The interior of this car is actually very well executed and it's kind of fun. I love the body color accents in here and one of my favorite parts is this gauge pod up here which has a turbo boost gauge, something you don't normally find with a diesel engine. It's just very cool. Uh, there are some negatives and that's this touchscreen infotainment system. The Fender sound system is awesome. I mean, awesome. Probably one of the best stereo systems in any car right now. The problem with it is this touchscreen interface here is slow to respond and it's a little bit goofy in how you use it. I think it's one area where Volkswagen still has a lot of room to improve. The rear cargo hold is larger than on the previous generation Beetle with the rear seats offering a split folding expansion for larger items. The Fender audio system has a large subwoofer back there taking up quite a bit of space but its sound is well worth the trade-off. Under the hood is what makes this car a godsend for some or a bizarre science experiment for others. The 140 horsepower 2 liter turbo diesel engine has a strong following of buyers, yet still many see it as a quirk of autodom. One of the smoothest and quietest diesels in the business today, it doesn't smoke, it doesn't pollute any more than a gasoline engine and offers up excellent fuel economy to go with its much improved drivability over the more recent 1.9 liter TDI engines of the last decade. You know, for a diesel, this has a pretty pleasant little power curve. It's not going to be as fast as the turbo, obviously, but 
it's not going to be slow and it's not going to be unenjoyable to drive. It's actually got a little bit of spunk. The EPA rates the Beetle TDI with our 6-speed manual at 28 MPG City, 41 MPG Highway with a 32 MPG combined rating. We achieved 36.5 MPG combined in our week with the TDI with a near 50-50 balance of city and highway driving. Driving around town, you really do know you've got a diesel engine under the hood, and that's not to say that it's noisy, it just makes a completely different sound, and it feels quite different with its torque curve, and that really also goes to how it drives with this manual transmission. You have to shift at a much lower RPM than you would with a gasoline engine, because the rev range is a lot lower on these diesels, and it's not a bad thing, it just takes some getting used to. On the road, the Beetle TDI has a solid German car feel. It rides like it weighs quite a bit, and well, it does, coming in at about 3,100 pounds. Steering is electronically assisted and gives a better than average feel, while the brakes offer up adequate power for the base grade hardware. For 2014, Volkswagen gave the Beetle TDI and the base Beetle the same multi-link independent rear suspension that used to be exclusive to the turbo gas model. And so what this does is it really gives you a little bit more refinement in that rear suspension than before. And the twist beam that used to be in the 2013 models and back wasn't really a super bad thing. After all, many GTIs over the years got plenty of accolades with that same suspension setup. But what the multi-link suspension does is it reduces some of the unsprung weight gives you a little bit more refinement and if you push it around in the mountain roads you probably really feel a little bit more precision in how it reacts. Overall the chassis and body structure are remarkably solid and tight with little in the way of rattles, clunks or jitters over the rougher surfaces. While the Beetle is actually built in Volkswagen's Mexico factory it still feels every bit a German car from behind the wheel. Summing it up, at the beginning of the video I already told you I was a little bit of a Volkswagen aficionado so it really shouldn't shock you at this point that it goes on our I buy it list for 2014. But it does have a few areas where I do think it needs improvement, namely that infotainment system. It still is a little bit slow to the touch and the menu system really could use a makeover. The interior, I, I really like the vinyl but I prefer leather when it comes to a car like this. The good news there is Volkswagen announced earlier this month that they're actually going to be offering a premium package now starting late in July that will offer leather, nicer wheels, and some R-line trim on the exterior. Just, you know, kind of a way to dress the car up a little bit if that's what you're looking for. Overall though, the drivability is very good. Even with the stick shift though, I'd probably order the DSG Automatic myself just because I really like the way that gearbox behaves. So this week, we give it four and a half out of five stars. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride.